Don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell. Hey, 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 hey. We are going to do, you and me, me and you, free response question number five from the practice 2014 AP Calculus AB exam. Whether it's your first time, welcome, or you've been here before, welcome back. We are going to do some calculus today, all right? And uh, this problem, we don't get a calculator. <laughs> Keep it. I don't need no calculator. Mm -mm. And this problem here, the setup might be a little bit more difficult, but the algebra behind it will be simple, well, because we don't get a calculator. So let's go ahead and start free response question, chingue. 5a. Particle x moves along the positive x axis so that its position at time t is greater than or equal to zero is given by x of t equals 5t cubed minus 9t squared plus 7. Okay. Is particle x moving toward the left or toward the right at time 1? Give a reason for your answer. So, all we really have here, okay, is position. This is position, okay? And in order to determine, in order to determine, in order to determine, okay, whether my particle is moving left or right, I am just going to look at the sign of velocity. If it's moving to the right, my velocity should be positive or bigger than zero. If it's moving to the left, my velocity will be negative or less than zero. So I need to find velocity. And I do that by taking the derivative of position. Okay? So we should have 15t squared minus 18t. Right? That is the equation for velocity. I want that at time equals 1. So we have 15 times 1 squared minus 18 times 1. 15 minus 18, all right, that gives us a negative 3. That is the velocity at time 1 right there. They don't want to know what the value of the velocity is. We still need to answer the question, is it moving left or right? And give a reason. That's like an explanation, okay? So let's answer. First of all, it's moving left. Moving left, since, and when you write an explanation or a reason, be specific. Don't just say since velocity is less than zero or velocity is negative. It's the velocity at time one. Okay, since, I'm going to say velocity at one is less than zero. Okay? You could have said since the velocity at time one is negative. There are a million ways to write it, but in all, in every one of those million ways, you need to be specific. You need to mention the specific time, one, and whether it's positive or negative, if it's moving left or right. 5b. At what time, for t is greater than or equal to zero, is particle x farthest to the left. Justify your answer. Justify means math work. We don't need words. We don't need no stinking words, okay? In 5a, we determined, okay, from 5a, we determined that at time equals 1, it's moving left already, okay? So I'm, I'm guessing it might start out moving left. So we got to figure out when it, it's farthest left. Okay, so maybe it's going to stop and turn around, whatever. Let's figure this out. So, we just determined from 5a, okay, again, from 5a, our velocity was 15t squared minus 18t, all right? So, let's figure out our critical points. Let's figure out where velocity is equal to zero, okay? And we're going to use a number line to kind of map out the movement of this particle, right? So let's factor and solve this. Factoring, my friends, never 
goes away ever <laughs> okay so I can take out a 3 and a T for a GCF, my greatest common factor. Put that in front of, okay, what's left if I divide out my 3T. I really don't show this step a lot. This is calculus. You should be able to do this in your sleep. So I get 5T minus 6, okay, set equal to 0. Let's solve for each one of these. I take 3T, set it equal to 0. That means T is 0. So at time 0, it's going to stop. It, it starts, when it starts at time zero, it's stopped. Okay, it's not already moving in a direction, okay? Stopped at time zero. Now, if I take 5t minus 6, set it equal to zero, I add 6 and then divide by 5. This is another place that it stops, okay? So maybe it changes directions here, okay? Or maybe it stops and continues. I don't know, all right? But let's take a look. Let's create a number line. I will do this, I'll do this in black here. Here's my number line. Well, let's start at zero. We're not going to put an arrowhead there. Okay, at time zero. No, that's really ugly. Let's do that. Let's try that again. I'll put the T over here. So at time zero, my velocity is zero because it stopped. It's also stopped at a time of six fifths. My velocity is zero. All right? And I know, okay, that I should check some values that aren't the zeros, okay, and see whether my velocity is positive or negative. I don't care about the number. I only care about the sign, all right? So let's pick, okay, we already know the number one, right? The velocity at time one was negative. It was moving left. In fact, we already know that. So negative here. So it's going to start out moving left, okay? Then it's going to stop right here. right here at a time of six fifths. So let's pick a number that's bigger than six fifths. Let's pick the number two. If I put two into my velocity, which I could put it in here, or I could put it in the factored version here, it really don't matter. Let's use the factored version, all right? Three times two is six. Five times two is 10, 10 minus four, or excuse me, 10 minus six is four. Okay, it's a positive 24. I don't care about the number so much. I just care that it's positive. So on this side, it's positive, 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 positive. So it's moving to the right after it stops. So let's map this out, okay? And, and let's kind of like, okay, here's at time zero. I'm going to start at time zero. At time zero. It's going to start moving left. I don't know how far left it's going. I just know it's moving left. And then at time six fifths it stops and then it moves right after that okay and it keeps on going forever to the right so at what time is this particle farthest to the left time is six fifths justification is all this math work so we will just say time equals six fifths we'll box that to let it know that that is our absolute answer and we're good to go so 5a and 5B were pretty simple. Oh boy, let's see what's coming. 5C, which is the last part to 5. There is no 5D, it's only 5A, 5B, and 5C. 5A and B were simple. Let's see what 5C does to us here. I got a feeling this might be some work. It reads, a second particle, Y, moves along the positive Y axis so that its position at any time t is given by y of t, which equals 7t plus 3 at any time t where t is greater than or equal to 0. The origin and the positions of particle x and y are the vertices of a triangle. This looks like it's going to be important. In the first quadrant, find the rates of change of the area of the triangle at time one, show the work that leads to your answer. All right, so I mean, let's take a look here. If I have an axis here, okay, here's my y axis, here's my x axis, and we have particle x, okay, here's particle x, it's at zero at time zero, whatever. 
particle X is going to be moving along the x-axis at some point. I don't know. Let's say it gets right here at some point. Okay. Particle Y is along the y-axis. Okay. So this particle is going to be moving up and down as this one moves left and right, whatever the case might be. All right. But right at time one, okay, one second, okay, which is this bad boy right here, this is one second, bam, let's say X is right there at one second, boom, Y is right here at one second. Then that means we're going to create a triangle. Okay, and at that moment, they want to know the rate of change of the area of that triangle. All right. So first of all, the area of a triangle, the area, let's do a thinner marker, of a triangle is one half base times height. All right. Area. Forget about the rate of change of that for a moment. Let's just figure out the area. Well, the base is whatever my x value is. Okay, this is my base. So it's really one half whatever my x of t function is at the time. And the height, the up and down, is my y of t function. All right? y of t function. This is the formula for area. I need to take the derivative of this. Now, if I recall from 5a, all right, x of t, that equation, is all right where in the hell did i put that oh i must have trashed it out let's go back and take a look um 5t cubed minus 9t squared plus 7. this right here is x of t all right so we have 5t cubed minus 9t squared plus 7. And y of t, which is given to me here, is 7t plus 3. So let's put those in our area. The area of this triangle here is 1 half, whatever x of t is, 5t cubed minus 9t squared plus 7 times whatever y t is, 7 t plus 3. Now, if I wanted to, I could foil this all together, what not. But we're not going to do that. We want to find, again, the rate of change of the area. So I really need the derivative of area with respect to time. So I'm going to use the product rule. My 1 half is going to stay the same. Okay. It's the first this is my first, just as it is. 5t cubed minus 9t squared plus 7. It's the first times the derivative of the second. Okay, the derivative of that second is just 7. Plus the second, just as that is, 7t plus 3, times the derivative of the first. Okay, so I need the derivative of the first function x of t, which is 15t squared minus 18t. Okay? This is the derivative. They want it at what? They want it at time 1. So all I'm going to do at this point is make t equal to 1. Okay? So for every t I have here, 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 and here, I'm going to put a 1 in. And you know what? Anything, you know, 1 squared is 1. Anything times 1 is itself. There's going to be a 1 there, a 1 here, a 1 here, a 1 here, and a 1 here. So let's kind of do our math. We have 1 half times 5 minus 9 plus 7. Okay, I'm actually putting the 1 in and figuring it out. Times 7 plus... Okay, 7 plus 3 times 15 minus 18. Okay, when I put a 1 in, I'm going to end up with all these numbers. All right? Let's do a little bit more math. 1 half. All right, negative 2. This is going to be 3 
times seven okay, plus or I'm yeah plus one half base times seven plus and then I've got uh, ten and negative three all right and I suppose uh, in case you haven't figured this out already because we left this constant alone outside I really got to do all this first before I bring the constant back in. So I'm not going to multiply my 1 half times 3 times 7. I'm actually going to take the product of 3 times 7, add it to the product of 10 and negative 3, and that's what I'm going to take half of. All right? So we have 21 plus, ooh, that's a negative 30. That's negative 9. I still need to multiply it times a half. So it's negative nine halves. They don't give us labels. They don't give us feet and seconds, or not that I, I can recall. Uh, first quadrant, find the rate of change. Nope, that's it. So that means the area of that triangle that I have in the upper left corner here, in the first quadrant, is actually shrinking by nine halves units per time, you know, distance per time, inches per second, whatever it is. That actually wasn't that bad. That actually wasn't that bad at all. Okay, so we are done. Took us 16 minutes. I talked for a minute before. I'm going to talk for a minute after. Follow me. Ring the bell. Like the video, okay? If you ring that bell and follow me, that's the only way you get notifications of videos I put up in the future. Okay, it's January. I know those uh, APs that are going to be offered in January are coming up real soon. And uh, if there's another test you want to see me do, if there's a comment about something that you do differently, that you find effective, I want to know. I ain't, there, there's no shame in learning something new. I love it. I love having more ways to teach. Okay? I will see you later. Go look on the exam. I, I see a 5 in your future. That's not a 5%. That's 5 out of 5 on the AP. And I'll see you for free response question number 6. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell.